Hello, I am Claire Butré, R&D Technical Leader at Quality Assistance, and I will present data obtained on the bridging study of systems I3 and Morris. Some of the amino acids, which are building blocks of proteins, are acidic or basic and have a charged state which depends on the pH of the solution. They are either positively charged, negatively charged, or are neutral. In addition, commonly, proteins are defined by their pi value. It's their isoelectric point, which corresponds to the pH at which the protein has an edge charge of zero. This pi value depends on the amino acid composition of the protein and is unique for each protein. As shown on the picture here at the bottom, below the pi value, proteins are overall positively charged, and above the pi value, they are negatively charged. Only at the pi value, they have a net charge of zero. Monoclonal antibodies, or MABs, are heterogeneous molecules, mainly due to post-translational modifications. Some modifications can also be the result of degradation. Examples of post-translational modifications are, for instance, the loss of the lysine on the C-terminal of the heavy chain, or N-glycosylation heterogeneity. Degradation leads, for instance, to methionine oxidation or asparagine deamidation. In some cases, stronger degradation could also lead to fragmentation of the antibody. The presence of these modifications affects the charge state of the antibody, and that is why these are qualified of charge variants, as variants of the main form. For efficacy and safety reason, it is mandatory to follow the charge variant profile. Here is a list of modifications. In the example of sialylation and deamidation, there is addition of COH group, which leads to the formation of an acidic form. Oxidation, on the other hand, leads to the formation of a basic form. Each of these modifications has an impact on the net charge of the monoclonal antibody and, as a consequence, on its pi. To monitor these modifications, the different charge variants are separated based on their pi value. This can be done by isoelectric focusing. Isoelectric focusing is a separation technique based on the difference in pi of proteins by applying an electric field along the capillary containing the proteins. When applying a current, proteins will move towards the pH corresponding to their pi value, where the net charge is neutral. Here is a display for gel isoelectric focusing, but the principle is the same in capillary isoelectric focusing, with a detection based on UV absorbance or fluorescence. Using image capillary isoelectric focusing, or ICIF, electrophorograms, as the one displayed here, are obtained. Here, we see the main peak, or main isoform. On the left side, we see the acidic variants, which have a pi lower than the main variant, and on the other part of the electrophorogram, there are the basic variants. Quality Assistance has several uh, systems for ICIF experiments to determine the charge variant profile of monoclonal antibodies. We have in the lab two I3 systems and two Morris systems. These are commercialized by Protein Simple. These systems are based on the same technology, but Maurice presents the advantage of using building capillary, where only the cartridge needs to be inserted in the system, as you can see here on the picture, without any capillary preparation or installation. And this improves the robustness of the analysis. The aim of the study we present here is to determine if comparable results are obtained on both systems for the determination of the percentage of acidic, basic, and main variants for uh, monoclonal antibodies. For this experiment, a model therapeutic antibody was used, adalimumab. Adalimumab was diluted in the CIF master mix containing methyl cellulose, permalite 310 and 810.5, arginine, and PI markers of 7.05 and 977. Detection was performed by absorbance and fluorescence. Data was acquired by ICFR software acquisition for ICE3 and acquired by Empower3 for Maurice. And data was processed with Empower3 for the two systems. As first approach, electrophorograms obtained on both equipments were compared. Here on this example, on this electrophorogram, the black line represents the signal of ICE3 and the red line, the data for Maurice. Electrophorograms are overall 
comparable, only in the basic region, there seems to be for this example a bit less resolution between two peaks. You can see this with the blue circle here on the right. We tried to improve the resolution between these peaks and the Maurice by changing thermalites and their ratios, but we were not able to reach the resolution as seen on I3. Still, it should be noted that this observation and slight loss of resolution is specific to this product and some, for some other samples run on both equipment, resolution was identical on both systems. For this study, it was decided to work with this antibody using adequate and homogeneous peak integration. To compare the data obtained on both systems, the performance of the method was evaluated. This means that precision was evaluated by determining the repeatability as well as the intermediate precision. Furthermore, limit of quantitation was also evaluated and compared for both systems. If we move on to the data, to the first result, on this table there are three main columns with a percentage area for acidic, basic and main variant. And for each of these columns it's divided between the data for Morris system and I3 system. Samples in this series were prepared four times individually and injected on the two systems. Acceptance criteria were set based on what is commonly done for validation studies at quality assistance. Acceptance criteria of 5% were set for repeatability on the acidic and basic charge variant and lower than 3% for the repeatability of the main variant. Looking at each system individually for each variant type, the error is lower than the acceptance criteria, and even the error of the data combined for the two systems is lower than the criteria. This means that we have proper precision on each equipment, but also that we have comparable data on both systems. Going further, we had in total three series of analysis where samples were prepared by two analysts. For each series, the repeatability is lower than the 5% criteria for acidic and basic variants and lower than the 3% criteria set for the main variants. As discussed for the first series, this is true when taking the systems individually and when combining the data of the two systems. Intermediate precision was calculated based on, this, on these three series. Criteria are said to be below 10% for the acidic and basic variants and below 5% for the main variants. These criteria are met for the different variants for each system individually, taking into account 10 values in this case, indicating that the method would be validated on both systems. Taking into account the data for both systems, so 20 values, acceptance criteria are also met, and this indicates that the methods are equivalent. The other main parameter evaluated was the limit of quantitation. This determination was based on the signal-to-noise ratio of the main isoform. To have a signal-to-noise ratio above 10, LOQ was verified at 5% of the nominal concentration, which is 0.015 mg per milliliter. This was checked on independent run on the two systems by two analysts, and in all cases, a limit of quantitation of 3% was uh, found. So equivalent limit of quantitation are obtained for the two systems, indicating here as well equivalence of the systems. To conclude, acceptance criteria are met for the two systems individually, indicating that method would be validated on each system. Furthermore, we have obtained comparable results on the two systems, I3 and Morris, indicating that the same method can be applied on these two systems, leading to equivalent precision and a limit of quantitation. Finally, this means that methods can easily be transferred from one equipment to the other. This work is described and detailed in an application note that can be downloaded on our website.